And good evening, everybody, and welcome to Usofia, where minds meet online. And tonight we are taking a trip along the uh, Main River, all the way up to Frankfurt. And in Frankfurt, we are meeting a very strange combination. A French courtesan, a French lady of the court, written up by Italians and put to music by Chilea, an Italian composer. So, uh, I'm very happy to have with us here Adriana Le Couvreur herself, Michaela Carosi. She changed her name for the evening. So, uh, good evening, Michaela. And, Hello. Uh, good evening. Uh, Davide Damiani, could you please tell us what your role in the crime was? You have to unmute your mic, Davide. Okay, now. Hello, everybody. Ciao, Michaela. Ciao. Ciao, Federico. Ciao, Cara. Un po' di tempo che non ci si vede. Eh, sì. <laughs> <laughs> so, what uh, what was your role in the Adriana Le Couvreur in Frankfurt, Davide? So, my role was uh, the role of missionary, the stage director of the, of the Comedy Francaise. And, um, you know, stage director he has to organize all the stage and um, uh, to take the actors on the stage and to organize everything. So it's a responsible person for everything. In this case, uh, I'm also um, in love, in love, only I am in love with Adriana. So I, 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 I tried in five years uh, to, to, to speak with her, to, to, I mean, to speak about love or something like this, to ask her something more than a usual word, but uh, I never, never arrive the clue, the, mm -hmm. at the moment, to ask her to marry me. And uh, so in the first act, there is a duetto, uh, and, uh, and there I, I ask her uh, that uh, I mean, I, I would like to ask her that I want to marry her, but she loves somebody else. So, the Maurizio. So, uh, uh, is, this, I mean, hmm? is this the picture of uh, you yeah, looking that, for that's words? Right. That's right. Yeah, that I'm, um, I'm not really... Um, I'm a bit uh, unsure in this moment because I don't know. I never asked to a, to a lady, maybe in my, wife, in my life, uh, about uh, you want to marry me because what I my thought in this production was uh, that I was only you know my uh, 30 years the past 30 years I, I was only thinking about working, working, and working love was not so I didn't find even the right person but now with Adriana I find the right person and for the moment to ask her to marry me but it's a long way. It's a long way. I, I don't find the words. I, I I'm. It's, it's really a difficult. And when I find the words, she say, "Oh, yesera, I saw a cavaliere. Cavaliere. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I love him. Uh, so I forget. So from this also, moment. Also because she's really younger than you. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Maybe she's 20, 20, 20. Yeah, twenty. Yeah between 20 and 25, and I'm, I don't know, 50, 55, uh, I'm not really sure uh, the age of Mishone, but much older, so 30, m almost 30 years older. And, uh, but uh, from Michonne, uh, the, the my, my, uh, the important thing that I wanted to give in this production was that uh, it has to have a melancholic side. That's very important because it's always sort of very. I mean, uh, with uh, all the 
all the uh, the people um, is always very hard. Mm-hmm. You want to do you do this, do this, do this. But with Adriana, I'm like uh, Giacciolo, you know, that he he lives in water. Uh-huh. A, uh, a piece of ice cream that melts. Okay. Yeah, that's the point. But in that, uh, the, 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 the point, important point was that it, it doesn't have to, to be a um, loser. Mm. It's not a loser. I mean, he has dignity and uh, just in, in love. With love, he's a loser. He doesn't have the words. He doesn't know really how to reach the point. Okay. We'll go, uh, in a minute, we'll go into the way that you actually build up uh, the the personage. Because, uh, by the way, it's very important to, uh, as we all know, uh, Holger, uh, you also uh, probably know, Adrienne Le Couvreur is a real, was a real person. She was a real very, very famous actress, and uh, the only thing that we're not very sure is how she died, if the way that she dies in the opera is... uh, But anyhow, she was a very, very famous and very loved, and she was the first actress, really, she became famous because her way of acting was very natural. It was not, you know, the big... uh, And uh, the... uh, One of the things that... Uh, Chilea liked very much about the character is that uh, Comédie Française was supposed to be very rigid. You know, everything is exact and precise, and which is not true. I mean, uh, you know, uh, in the Comédie Française, you always had uh, a bit of crazy theater. But Chilea, uh, when he wrote the music, uh, did do a little bit of a uh, twist on the on the idea. Uh, this is very very uh, stylized theater, and here comes the lady who actually breaks the style and is very natural. And because she's very natural, everybody falls in love. Federico, what did you do in the production? I was the Prince of Bouillon, which is already a funny name for a funny character. Bouillon is. Brodo, bro. <laughs> that already, already tells you a lot about the character. And uh, in the story, he's the patron of the prima donna in the theater, which is before Adriana Le Couvreur, is uh, La Duclos. Uh, that was another actress who was considered the prima donna in the theater, and then Adriana Licouvreur comes and uh, suddenly there's the eclipse of Duclos, who is um, the, the one that uh, I patron and probably she's also my, my lover. And so as soon as I see that Adriana Licouvreur is so good on the stage, such a good actress, I kind of I, I don't really fall in love with her, not not in the, in the way that Michonne does, but I'm certainly fascinated by her charm. And um, and um, the, the Prince of Bouillon is also a very sophisticated character. Not It's not a round character in the drama. It's pretty flat. It's funny, it's odd, and he's, um, he's very pa- passionate, very um, fond of uh, chemistry and alchemy. And um, the interesting thing about the character is that describing the character of uh, Prince of Bouillon, uh, uh, Chilea describes the attitude of uh, the bourgeoisie at that time. He has a wife, but certainly their lives are very free, and he he's got lovers uh, in the theaters, and probably the well, we then get to know that the princess has a lover as well. And, um, so they are married, but they're not very interested. Not very married. Not very married. Not <laughs> okay. Not really. Not really. <laughs> 
Uh, you know that, uh, uh, well, first of all, Madame Duclos, uh, in one of the articles written about her performance in one of the uh, plays, was described as the best dying heroine on the French stage. Because she took six minutes uh, or six or seven minutes to die, and every minute of that dying was full of life. And this was in a uh, review of uh, a play. Uh, and Voltaire said, We don't need actresses that live their death, we need actresses that are alive on stage. And Voltaire was a, a big uh, admirer of. Uh, Michaela Caro uh, of uh, Adrienne uh, Le Couvreur. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, she was uh, lover of Adrienne. Uh, he was, uh, well, yes, uh, but yeah. he was, uh, he was, first of all, he was a big admirer and she was in many of his plays and uh, he was very, very uh, sad and uh, really I'm not going to use the bad words that were used, but uh, he was pissed off when uh, the way that uh, the church treated Adriana after her death, and he wrote a beautiful uh, poetry uh, to Adriana after her death. I'm going to ask everybody to uh, sit back and relax, and we're going to watch a piece of a movie uh, which is a trailer that the um, uh, Oper Frankfurt did about the play, and we're going to listen to the director and to the uh, decor and costume maker, and of, obviously to everybody here singing, but uh, also very interesting is that the director of the play is somebody from the Comédie Française. So uh, maybe he is also somebody who knew Adrienne, uh, Adriana Le Couvreur personally, but uh, let's watch this. I'm going to mute everybody so that we don't have echo. Here we are. What is it about? Is it about the show? Is it about the real life? I do like that we don't know exactly where we are. It's not a piece who has a critical uh, analysis of a society. It's a real piece for entertainment. The piece in which you can you can uh, fragilize the, the, the shape, uh, and and then you, you can't you can't forget about why and the way it was done, why and how it was done that time. It belongs to this tradition of, of big big uh, dramas uh, having uh, people from the stage on, on uh, the stage like a Tosca, like Joconda. <laughs> we would easily destroy it if we touch the structure of it. Chile has music is huge and strong. It requires someone with a strong physicality, with a strong voice, exactly the opposite of the real Adriana. And I worked a lot with, with, the, with the singer here, with Michaela, on this how to find with this big shape, with this big musical pattern, how to find there what makes it trembling, that makes everything fragile. This music is full of color, 
I mean, we have from the fortissimissimo to the pianissimo. So it's not easy to achieve these things. What I'm trying to do is really to, to bring out also these different uh, levels of dynamics and color of the instrument that you can listen. At the end of the of the second act between the, the Duetto Principessa and um, Adriana, it's dangerous because uh, the orchestra is really, really loud, but it, this is how it's written. In the partitura we have like three fortissimi, like fortissimissimo, but if I play fortissimissimo with this orchestra, you, you don't hear anything, because they give, they give a lot. and So we have to really to cut a lot of dynamics in some parts. As a costume designer, I've, uh, my duty is uh, following what the director has in mind. Of course, we e exchange some ideas. The idea is to have for the because the story is a true story. It happened for real in Paris, Comédie Française. All the characters uh, existed, and of course, I didn't want to avoid any period costume. I'm love to do some contemporary things when it sounds uh, authentic, genuine, but for this piece we needed to have not only period costume, but theatre period costume. We are talking about good stage costume. I think it's also a costume which can be read from far, not only from first row. And there's a big, big difference in between fashion and, and costume. Stage costume, it has to be louder. Christian and I, I've been working for more than 10 years now. During the fitting, it's the first moment where you meet the reality, which is the, the singer, with your gem. And then it's nice to share it. The quick costume, the first steps, it depends on the um, director. With Vincent, I start by listening to him hours and hours, and then I sketch very rough things. But when I start working with a new director, we have to find the right uh, alchemy, the right way of working together. And then uh, I much prefer directors attending the most fitting as possible. beautiful moment in this opera for me I mean it's okay for sure the two areas of the soprano the famous one the first and the second one. the area of the principessa is really beautiful I mean the second part is really like also for the orchestration but also for the musical line is really nice for me this opera is not really a, a true verismo opera but the, um, the aspect of the composition and the aspect of the the, um, the passion that you have is a little bit, I would say, lighter than in, in the in the Verismo opera that we people knows as a Puccini opera. I mean, every time I come here, I'm really happy. It's really like a place that you can relax, making music, and enjoy your work. The orchestra plays fabulous chorus. They are always fantastic, well prepared. It's unbelievable how they how they still enjoy music every time they come to the performance or to the rehearsal. This is something really special. The border between reality and the fiction is 
uh, I'm trying to make it uh, the, in a way less clear possible. I love to play with this uh, uh, uncertainty, with the tension between those two, uh, those two aspects. Is she dying for real or is she making uh, the most wonderful dramatic scene of her career? Which we don't know. So, uh, well, I guess now is the time to find out. Michaela, did you really die or was it the most dramatic scene of your career? Stupid question. Forget it, forget it, forget it. I didn't <laughs> ask it. Uh, you know, I always wonder, when you get together so many people, because in order to do an opera, you have to have, first of all, all the people that built the building, you know, because an opera has to have a house, has to have a building. So we have all that, and then we have the people that we all, as artists, love to hate, you know, the administration of the theatre. Uh, you have in every large theatre, you have at least 40, 50, 60 people, uh, and of the 60 people, 58 are responsible for saying, it's not my job, talk to him. And uh, But, you know, they are also there, and they're also alive, and they're also breathing, and they're also part of making this whole thing happen. And then we start going into the nitty-gritty part of the artists. You know, and we're talking about not the stars, we're talking about the orchestra, all the people that could have been maybe or maybe dreamt to be uh, soloist and they became second or third violinist or cello player in the orchestra. And then we go to the chorus and uh, in this play we have chorus of children and chorus of etc. Uh, etc. Et so at the end of the day we are, and I think I'm not exaggerating, I think an, an operation like this one is probably a, covering about 250 to 300 people, right? And I'm always amazed at how is it that, you know, from people that go to different cafes, like different types of food, have different types of love life, interests, all those people get together and all of a sudden one play with one characteristic, with one theatrical being is happening. And you lived it. So, uh, Michaela, this was all actually built around Adrienne and around the difference between, as if the only thing that existed is the difference between this uh, kind of uh, uh, huge musical production and a very natural kind of actress. So, uh, the, 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 but then into this we have knitted the extras and the singers and the chorus and how was it how do you feel as a leading actress as a leading singer how did you feel in this oh it was an incredible work and it is the mystic of opera because uh, <laughs> you know uh, we are all different but we go all uh, in, uh, in, the, in the same direction so <laughs> with a different mind but the same direction so uh, it was really incredible because uh, it was a fluently work uh, with a big emotion. It was my first uh, opera after my pregnancy, so I was really sensible. <laughs> and um, every time uh, we do the fourth act, I was crying, only acting, without singing. <laughs> so, 
So uh, I think that uh, everybody was um, uh, feeling this um, emotion. Uh -huh. um, the chorus, uh, the the orchestra, the the director, the conductor, and so this maybe this was um, how do you say collante? <laughs> uh, how do you say the? Um, oh, the uh, the glue. The glue. Yeah. The glue. Yes, because um, uh, when we when we're open to the other one and you work with the other one without uh, working alone, uh, something happened. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, it's something that uh, you, you, you will find after in, in your life, uh, not only on the scene, because uh, if uh, we work here with Federico and David, it's because uh, uh, we, had, um, we had an emotion. On, on the scene and after eating, uh, talking uh, and and knowing each other. So, um, but this was also good for opera. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think that uh, is not separated the the, the dynamic. Uh, but this is the way in which I work. So I'm not a, a solist uh, like a diver. Uh, I don't want to be alone on the scene. I, I want to, to feel all the um, emotion of the other people around me, the chorus, uh, but also when I die at the end uh, and uh, I look at uh, David and Maurizio, I, 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 re I was really crying because I felt uh, the emotion of the people. So it was uh, an incredible work for me. Uh -huh. I don't know if, uh, it's the same for the other one, but for me it was really... Uh, uh, Michaela. Also for me, Michaela. It was great. Work with you. Uh, Davide, when you, yeah. when you work on a piece like that, where, you know, on stage you are yeah. a double stage presence because you are the presence of somebody who says uh, five minutes, uh, Madame Adrienne, five minutes, and on the other hand, uh, how is it to be on stage, and I'm not talking about the clean rehearsals, I'm talking about the dirty rehearsals, you know, where everybody is running around and, uh, uh, you know, something is falling and uh, somebody's talking, and obviously it never happens in, in real theater, it's only in my dream, but... Uh, you know, they uh, done that uh, uh, I wanted to be, be, I mean, before to be a singer, I was a conductor, so everybody knows this, yeah? <laughs> and this, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I have uh, also in me always this kind of, uh, to, to be the organizer of the, <laughs> the, the rehearsal, I mean, you know? For me, it will be no problem to be a conductor, say, so now we start from the bars and whatever, and this, we do this, and that. I, I will not, not have any problems, really. So I find I find the the a right role in this in the right moment. <laughs> so Michonne with was the right, with, with the right codex. And uh, Federico, as a sponsor of the arts, uh, who actually comes on stage, and uh, again. On one hand, you are deploring the artistic death of Madame Duclos, and uh, on the other hand, you allow yourself to be taken by this fantastic presence of uh, Adrienne, of Adriana. Um, how did the director work with you on that? Uh, oh well, did he really work on that on me? I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm asking. The, no, the I think all our efforts were about that character were concentrated on the fact that, despite the fact that he was a sort of fake person. Uh, because of the attitude that he had towards his wife and so on, um, we tried to make 
a positive character out of the Prince of Leon. And uh, meaning that being a sponsor, being a patron, he certainly always wanted and needed to be part of the drama, part of the, to, to feel part of the artistic world. That, for, for sure, he, he's aware that he's not an artist. In fact, he's interested in, as I said, chemistry and alchemy and so on. But he likes to be surrounded by artists. And as soon as he recognized the talent of Adriana Lecouvreur, he he's charmed and he wants to her to be um, uh, at his side. And um, so this was the positive aspect of uh, of the prince. And so we didn't really work on the on the development of the character because it all came out very naturally. Um, he follows the art, he follows the, the talent, and uh, the sad part of it is the way he forgets about uh, Duclo, like suddenly, as soon as he spots Adriana Lecouvreur, Duclo is not interested in her anymore. Because Probably, it's, uh, maybe it's also a an historical thing because when I, I said bourgeoisie, but it was wrong. I mean, he is uh, part of the aristocracy, yeah. and um, probably Duclos is part of the ancien regime in a way. And the way that Michonnet and Adriana Lecouvreur uh, live their love uh, is certainly more more advanced in time, like more after the French Revolution. And so probably there's also a, a historic meaning in this Duclos falling and uh, and, Le, and Adrien Lecouvreur rising up. And so the prince, in a way, follows the, the story, follows the new talent, which is Adrien Lecouvreur for sure. An opera any opera uh, is a piece of life. It tells a story, and the story is very emotional. Uh, at least when we're talking about lyrical operas, uh, any kind of opera is a very strong story. There's a confrontation uh, between character, there's confrontation between um, positions in life, etc., etc. And you as human beings, but as professional presenters, as professional performers, dedicated, dedicate a piece of your life to create this dramatic event. And this dramatic event has a beginning, a middle, and an end. How does it feel that such a dramatic event that owes everything to you, owes all its life, all its livelihood, only to your bravura as performers, comes to an end. Not only because Adrienne dies at the end, whether she dies or she doesn't die, it doesn't matter, but the opera is no more. What kind of a feeling is it? Oh, <laughs> it's for David, this question. <laughs> no, um, it's a, you know, it, it depends on on the artist uh, because um, for me, there's no separation between um, um, between the, the artistic. Uh, um, La composizione artistica, la, uh, the artistic composition, composition uh -huh. yes, and my life. So when I cook, I'm thinking to Adriana, and when I, I and when I'm I'm singing, I, I want to go to eat, <laughs> so, <laughs> because I I I'm a human being. So uh, um, um, I know there's a lot of people that uh, made a catharsis. Catharsis is a, 
catharsis, uh, yes. Catharsis, yeah. The, uh, who lives the uh, art like uh, something that uh, is uh, more pure than um, what I mean. Uh, for me, it's more um, um, linked to the um, sensorial and, and to the um, human being. Um, for me, it, it, before you ask me, tell me a music that you want to hear when you want to break uh, with music and you you want to to to, to concentrate yourself. For me, it's the silence. <laughs> the music is silent because now. I, I I I do gardening, and I am in the silence, and and I I smell the flower, and uh, I do something else, but uh, I'm not doing something else. I'm thinking to the music all my life. I think to the music, and I am absolutely uh, certain of what I want to do when I go on the stage, and if I don't do it, uh, I know that I didn't do it. Because I feel in my in my head, which one is the um, um, pure creation? Mm -hmm. um, because I think about it all 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 the day, all the night, and <laughs> um, it's a strange um, sensation. Um, I think it's like a vocation because. Um, Maybe a searcher like Holger uh, can can feel the same because um, uh, work like music is not uh, something that finish when when you finish the, uh, the opera. Sorry, tell me them. <laughs> no, but I'm 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 asking. Uh, I I I hear you and I can relate to what you say but uh, I don't know Davide if you are singing when you cook or you cook when you are on stage but, uh, but no, what I was I... laughing before because uh, when you say uh, missione on the stage uh, is uh, acting no because uh, behind the scene I'm drinking. I I, I, I do the, the the same thing that uh, Adriana do, uh, uh, and he he look at me. <laughs> so yeah. it's not so far from reality. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm trying to find out is, you know, uh, how long did you live with Adriana? No, when I finish opera, I stop. Her with that opera and I enter to the other <laughs> character. So, that's uh, that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to understand. Isn't it difficult? Isn't it difficult to all of a no, sudden, it, you know, you become so close <laughs> and so intimate. Uh, uh, Davide Michonne is quite uh, you know, it's quite different than a lot of uh, he was uh, you know, he, in the history of opera, he was also, he's always, uh, you know, the, the lover that cannot achieve his loved one, but he's also a certain type, because we don't have many stage directors in, uh, as, as, in opera. We don't. Uh, we have uh, uh, buffoons. We have uh, Rigoletto. We have uh, you know, uh, but we don't have many. So it was something uh, very special. The kind of uh, character that was created. What do you carry with you after the the opera is finished? I mean, first of all, I tried uh, um, to take with Michonne something of me on the stage, something me, uh, something very intimate for me, for myself. Uh, because uh, if you want to that uh, character uh, live uh, on the stage, uh, it's moving the people. Um, you have to 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 take something from you. Like you can't. You can build something, a character. It's impossible because you can't. You have to take from you inside your emotions, your your experience in, in the life. 
and uh, and day after day, with the, with the help of the colleagues, if everything works, with the, even with the music, with the conductor, with the other colleagues, it will come out the right the right uh, the right uh, character that you want to take out the nobility, for example, of mission nobility. Um, so such. Uh, if you wanted this expression or that these uh, these um, um, emotions came out, um, you have to just give time for this. Uh -huh. Now it has to be like this. There is one, there is this director. They want now this, and I can't. So because it's impossible. I mean, there is okay. You do you do write you do you do link or, or something like this. But it's not really. Uh, uh, Adriana is very, is very. Uh, um, uh, it's very it's very close to your body. Body, yeah, yeah very, very near. We uh -huh. are very near body, so it's not, uh, not the distance. Federico, uh, does it happen o uh, often that you come on stage? to the first performance, to the first rehearsal, sorry, with a very definite idea of the character, of the way to sing it and everything. And once you open your mouth, the director or the conductor say, uh, 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 something completely different. Does it ever happen? Well, it does happen sometimes. But uh, that wasn't the case because I got to I got in Frankfurt that day without knowing the role because <laughs> I was yes the one who was supposed to sing the role got <laughs> ill or he had a problem on the stage he kind of broke some leg or something like this they called me last minutes and so I grabbed the score in the, in the store and I um, uh, caught the, the flight and I uh, flew to Frankfurt without knowing the role. And so in the first rehearsal, I had no idea about the opera, no idea about the role. <laughs> so the, the director was explaining to me the, the, the role and how he thought about the Prince of Bouillon. And um, well, working with, uh, with our director was I think it was a very nice work it took us I, how, how long was it guys like a month the, the rehearsing time maybe three weeks yeah no, six weeks six okay, five weeks. weeks five weeks sorry five weeks okay and so pretty long time and Adriana Lecouvreur is not a very long opera and uh, so it was intense, and no. um, <laughs> yes, and in this case, really, we we got along very well uh, all the time from the beginning till the end of the production. We didn't, I think, we didn't have one argument with the director or even with the conductor. It's like it's been poetry. It's been <laughs> uh, incredible, and uh, so there was one very interesting. And, one very interesting yeah. thing that uh, Mr. Lacroix, the custom designer, said, he used the word uh, that every time he works with a new director, he has to find the alchemy. He did not say the chemi the chemistry, he said the alchemy, which is uh, quite rare to hear, you know, because um, alchemy has something of... Uh, of mystery, uh, something uh, that goes beyond the creation of molecules. Uh, how was it to try out? What what happens normally when you try out costumes for the first time? How is the meeting with a costume? And I'm going to ask the lady of the group, Michaela. At this time, it was incredible because um, Christian was there <laughs> and uh, was there and well, uh, he was, um, he designed any costume looking at me um, because uh, we need uh, another costume for the 
për parti e të bujon in the third act with the Fedra Fedra and so he was thinking about the costume looking at me and and drawing and so it was in his world and uh, it was a meeting um, a strange meeting because uh, he was working uh, um, like a painter uh, and he was in another world uh, with um, with his um, inspiration so it was really nice and uh, he is really sweet um what he made I think uh, it's an incredible show because uh, everybody was uh, um, amazing and perfect and um, spectacular and uh, all together was uh, so beautiful, so so full of poetry that uh, and it's strange because we we never see a performance uh, behind from the platea uh -huh. <laughs> so when I look at this video for me it's a big emotion because I, I really never ever see in the performance <laughs> just just uh, pictures and um, if I see the trio of the uh, of the characters of the comedy francais uh, I, I feel the big uh, work of uh, Vincent but uh, I feel also that um, Christian, uh, it's like uh, the. How do you say the ciliegina on the torta? It's the. Share the cake. Share the cake. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a. That you can search um, uh, to 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 um, to to define define it. Define. Define. Something. So, and and you see that uh, the alchemy is different because uh, um, chemical is not um, always uh, true, and alchemy is something with the um, need that you you have to think to, about your chemical. Uh, it's not. Um, it doesn't finish with chemical. <laughs> You have to put something else to 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 do a better work. Yeah, I think uh, it's not a uh, it's it's a um, commission. Uh, uh, what the, the other uh, the other between the heart and the mind. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, the uh, David, you. Hmm. Uh, always wanted to be a conductor and then all of a sudden you became a leading singer and a conductor and into that you have an injection of having to be a performer it's not enough that you have a beautiful voice and that you understand music and that you can tell uh, an orchestra what to play harder what to play softer what to uh, but you have to perform, you have to become a person. What is important for you in an opera? Or is it a mixture of everything? I mean, first of all, to know uh, the, the music, but not only to know, more than know. So, uh, to know every, every, no, I mean, everything, everything that composer, because it's our document what we achieve from the, uh, from the composer. And uh, that's, that's the most important. That you don't change uh, after note with a quarter or something like this. That it happens, it doesn't happen in the performance, but in, when you study, you have to be very precise. That was uh, really I learned and uh, what I want to do. Um, that's the first thing. Then uh, is... Um, for sure, um, to know what really good for your voice is, and that you you ask, uh, I mean, you you can 
um, uh, speak with the conductor and that he helps you to throw out the best of your of your material of, of, of your voice and you with your voice you can also uh, take out a character so i mean is a is a you know is a playing between me and the conductor and the, the stage director too. it's really you know it, it's not only because we are on the stage and we do everything what they want i mean it's always they ask us but we are asked also mm -hmm. please can you wait here can you give more time i need more time for the breath mm, i mean sometimes it's not only breath it's really that you you need for for, for the expression so uh, for some singers the same phrase it can be faster for me no for example you know mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes we have many problems there is conductor they conduct everything uh, very fast or there is other conductor there, there is uh, everything must be slow and so we are we, we became crazy at that uh, production sometimes we, we need a psychology <laughs> <laughs> okay and uh, did you in this production did you learn a lot about the period when it happened because I saw that, uh, as opposed to many productions that go very much modern, uh, this was not exactly 100% modern. It was a little bit a mixture of uh, both, because, you know, there's a good reason. It's on stage, it's Comédie Française, and it happens on stage. So, uh, But uh, did you actually study, uh, during the rehearsals, did you actually study the period? You know, uh, Prince, yeah. uh, this is the end of princehood. We're talking about, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, society was changing during... Uh, did this go come into the rehearsals? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. With the stage director, we spoke everything because, uh, for example, about uh, the Comédie Française, that it exists now, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's not uh, finished. Uh, and so it, they tell us everything more than possible. Um, so we, we learn many things. And then everybody in his character, I learned about my character. For example, uh, the stage director told me uh, that he saw somebody in the, in the Comédie Française in Paris that he, he looks like uh, Michonnet for him. <laughs> <laughs> and he said uh, to Christian Lacroix, so I want a missionnaire like this, so <laughs> this cost the dress. So, um, for example, you know, he took everything from there and uh, they, they tell us, uh, they um, said, uh, and uh, they keep this information. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, this was very interesting to try to get into uh, the characters and uh, I, I'm really grateful for you for opening up and allowing us to uh, visit the inside of uh, the making of an opera. Uh, I would like to, as all our meetings in Yosofia are meetings that want to leave the taste for more. I would like to uh, first of all thank you very much for being here with us tonight and for sharing with us the beauty of working on uh, a very, very, for me, a very engaging piece of music like uh, Chilea's uh, Adrien Le Couvreur uh, because it's not only the singing. The If you look at the uh, at the manuscript, the the music is so rich, is is so uh, the composition is so perfectly balanced, and uh, uh, and I think the uh, musical director did a fantastic job in balancing out uh, the difference between uh, you know uh, the singer and the music, and uh, I would like with your permission, for all of us uh, to watch again 
some parts of that uh, movie that we saw in the beginning. And with this, I'd like to thank you very much for being here with us, dear Sophia, where minds meet online. And uh, we're looking forward, I mean, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we were supposed to be in New York. And uh, they took New York and put it in the middle of the sea, so we're not going to be in New York. Uh, so uh, Thursday night, we're going to meet with Valentina Valente and uh, Eric Battaglia, who are doing something fantastic. Uh, they're doing the Schubertiade as uh, a homage to uh, Fischer Diskau. Uh, but it's a uh, it's a big production. It'll be until uh, uh, 2014. So uh, we're going to be able to listen to them a little bit, telling us about what they're doing. And if everything goes okay, instead of transmitting live from New York, we will be transmitting live from Torino next Monday. But this Thursday. We are meeting with uh, Eric Battaglia and uh, Valentina Valente. So, thank you very much again. And uh, I'm going to mute you for the last time. And uh, I hope, Holger, that your ironing was easier with the sound of uh, Adrien Le Couvreur. Holger, are you still with us? Uh, he's he's under the iron. So uh, here we go. The trailer of Adriana Le Couvreur from the opera in Frankfurt. Thank you very much, Michaela, Davide, and Federico. And thank you, Holger. Oh, ciao. Ciao ragazzi. Ciao Dan. Ciao. 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 I do like that we don't know exactly where we are. It's not a piece who has a critical uh, analysis of a society. It's a real piece for entertainment. It's not a piece in which you can, you can uh, fragilize the, the, the shape. And, and, and then you, you, can't, you can't forget about why and the way it was done, why and how it was done at that time. It belongs to this tradition of, of big, big uh, dramas, uh, having uh, people from the stage on, on uh, the stage, like a Tosca, like Chokonda. We would easily destroy it if we touch the structure of it. Chilean music is huge and strong. It requires someone with a strong physicality, with a strong voice, exactly the opposite of the real Adriana. I worked a lot with, with, the, with the singer here, with Michaela, on this, how to find with this big shape, with this big musical pattern, how to find there what makes it trembling, that makes everything fragile. This music is full of color. I mean, we have from the fortissimissimo to the pianissimo. So it's not easy to achieve these things. What I'm trying to do is really to, to bring out also these different uh, levels of dynamics and color of the instrument that you can listen.
At the end of the, of the second act between the, the Dueto Principessa and um, Adriana, it's dangerous because uh, orchestra is really, really loud, but it's, this is how it's written. In the partitur we have like three fortissimi, like fortissimissimo, but if I play fortissimissimo with this orchestra, you, you don't hear anything because they give, they give a lot. And so we have to really to cut a lot of dynamics in some parts. As a costume designer, I, my duty is uh, following what the director has in mind. Of course, we exchange some ideas. The idea is to have for the because the story is a true story. It happened for real in Paris, Comédie Française. All the characters uh, existed, and of course, I didn't want to avoid any period costume. I love to do some contemporary things when it sounds uh, authentic, genuine, but for this piece we needed to have not only period costume, but theatre period costume. We are talking about good stage costume. I think it's also a costume which can be read from far, not only from first row. And there's a big, big difference in between fashion and, and costume. Stage costume, it has to be louder. Christian and I, I have been working for more than 10 years now. During the fitting, it's the first moment where you meet the reality, which is the, the singer, with your dream. And then it's nice to share it. The correct costume, the first steps, it depends on the um, director. With Vincent, I start by listening to him hours and hours, and then I sketch very rough things. But when I start working with a new director, we have to find the right uh, alchemy, the right way of working together. And then uh, I much prefer directors attending the most fitting as possible. beautiful moment in this opera for me I mean it's okay for sure the two areas of the soprano the famous one the first and the second one. the other the principessa is really beautiful I mean the second part is really like also for the orchestration but also for the musical line is really nice for me this opera is not really a a true Verismo opera, but the, um, uh, the aspect of the composition and the aspect of the, the, um, the passion that you have is a little bit, I would say, lighter than in, in, the, in the Verismo opera that we, people know as a Puccini opera. Every time I come here, I'm really happy. It's really like a place that you can relax, making music and enjoy your work. The orchestra plays fabulous chorus. They are always fantastic, well prepared. It's unbelievable how they, how they still enjoy music every time they come to the performance or to the rehearsal. This is something really special. <laughs> between reality and the fiction is, uh, I'm trying to make it uh, the, in a way less clear possible. I love to play with this uh, uh, uncertainty, with the tension between those two, uh, those two aspects. Is she dying for real or is she making uh, the most wonderful dramatic scene of her career, which we don't know.
Good night.